Hi, gang. I'm working on M27, and I thought I would take you with me a little bit here. I have about six and a half hours of subs captured already, and I did a quick and kind of dirty uh, processing today on the data that I did have, and I'll give you a look here. And I'm pretty happy with this. The uh, oxygen is really coming out nicely on this. I'm hoping that with some additional data added to the stack that uh, we'll see a lot more of um, the, uh, the oxygen extending out here in, in detail. So, but I think it's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how the final turns out. So like I said, it's about an hour. I'm gonna get set up and I'll take you along for the ride. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF. All right, so I'm over here in, uh, in ECOS, which is the capture software as part of KSTARS, uh, which I use. I have the clients running on my notebook and they are connecting remotely to a Raspberry Pi that's on top of my telescope, which is running the Indy server. And uh, my version is the StellarMate version that's running on there. Uh, although I don't have to interact with the StellarMate stuff too much. It just kind of works and, and works pretty good. Um, I have uh, a few snags every once in a while, but uh, I think it's going okay. I'm pretty happy with it. So initially I connect all of my equipment. So my EQ mod mount, which is for my HEQ5 Pro, and I'm running a filter. I, have a, I don't have a filter wheel, so I set up a manual filter as far, part of my profile and just confirming that it is set and make sure my focuser is connected. Uh, Watchdog is cool. If my software crashes or I lose connection, then Watchdog will park my mount for me automatically with a trigger if the client does not respond within 10 seconds. And that'll keep the mount from tracking all night long if there's a crash and ending up um, hitting the uh, tripod leg or something like that. So anyway, this is a nice safety feature. And I have my guide camera, which is the uh, ZWO ASI 120mm. And then my main camera, which is the uh, ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. And everything's connected good. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to pull up my capture sequence, which I have already from last night and the night before. and I'll load that up. And so basically that sets up all of my configuration for my main capture camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the cooler going on that. Then I'm gonna make some modifications uh, to where I save this. Uh, when I save files here, I'm actually saving from the, um, from the, from the camera uh, remotely and saving the images locally on my notebook. So if I go into my uh, project folder for pictures under astrophotography um, for this project, I'll create a new folder. This one's gonna be day three. And we'll create that. And that's where we're going to be saving these. All right, so I set up my capture directory here locally and the the camera will transfer the files as it takes them over here. And it takes about, I don't know, maybe four seconds per transfer per, per sub. It's not bad. And if I'm taking, uh, in this case, five minute subs, that four seconds doesn't uh, impact anything. And so I just, uh, I know everything's right here because this is what I've been using uh, since I loaded this capture sequ sequence. I do need to edit this, so and that means I have to set this back. But let's see. Back 
to that folder. OK, so that's good. And then I can save the sequence. And I don't know why. I probably don't need to. But let me get the brightness up a little bit here. Um, but I save one for each night. And I, just in case there's any changes, I, I do eventually delete these. But uh, I just change the date. So now that's saved. If uh, And I do that as a matter of convenience. If something happens and the... I lose connection or, or have to restart this for some reason, I can come back in and just load this, this sequence back in and uh, I don't have to reconfigure all this. And then I'll go over to the schedule and I need to kind of do the same thing. So I want to load in the last schedule and I've got those saved in a schedules directory. And let's double check everything on here. So I'm using a, uh, oh, I, let's, uh, I need to load the uh, sequence, the capture sequence that I just created. And actually, before I do that, I always forget to do this. I got to put this in editing mode. And then I'll go ahead and go to the capture sequence. I just created, which is this one, and load that in. And then I've got a, I just wanted to show you, I don't have to change this, but um, after my first night's nice capture, I always save a, um, an image uh, from, one of the, from the lights directory. And uh, it might be hard to read here, but uh, this is like the first image that I captured from the, the day one lights. And it is called solver.fits is the way I name it. And then I use that for every session for the same um, target. And uh, that way I use this for, this is, this is then used for um, in the alignment module um, when I am doing plate solving. And that makes sure that I get lined up exactly the same from night to night. And that uh, that's, works really good for me. And uh, I think that that has been uh, noticeably uh, a noticeable improvement in the reduction in stacking artifacts because my uh, image frames night to night are really tight. So I don't have to crop too much off of my images in post-processing. So I just take a look at the startup conditions. Uh, when I set this, I'm going to, I'm actually going to change that to, um, to today, and we'll do that at uh, 8.30. And these can stay the same. Uh, the twilight setting here, uh, this is uh, 8.36. That'll be fine. Um, I will actually just do an ASAP on that. Leave twilight set which is a job constraint, and that will keep this from running until 2036, which is actual astronomical darkness. And the other constraints, I don't really use this alt, um, just a zero. I can set this to a degree. I probably should do that at some point. And uh, um, artificial horizon uh, is just one of the defaults. And that's pretty much it. Uh, when I uh, start up, it's going to unpark my mount down over here, and when all these uh, tool tips, um, uh, if a job is aborted, it's going to stay in the queue. And when the job is done, it's going to warm up the CCD, and it's going to park the mount. So anyway, I can just hit start on this, and it will queue it up. And if you notice, the we've got a little stopwatch here so uh, it's sleeping until observation time and then this job will automatically start now before that time I'm going to do a, uh, a quick check on my alignment and see if I need to adjust anything I had a good alignment last night and didn't touch anything so hopefully it's still good but if it isn't I'll go out and we'll take care of that
Okay, it should be dark enough out to get a rough focus. And let's take a look. I'll get a capture. Maybe not quite. Well, there's stars in there, but I don't think it's quite dark enough yet. So let's wait a few minutes. Okay, so actually it helps if I have the right exposure and gain setting. I was looking at the sun earlier today, and I had this uh, exposure all the way down as low as it would go and zero gain. So that is why I wasn't seeing any stars. So anyway, I want to, we're actually, looks like it's pretty good right now. I'm surprised because I was focusing all over the place on trying to get sunspots in focus today. But it looks like I got it back pretty close. So I'm going to run a loop here. And in fact, I think I'm close enough to do an autofocus. Uh, running it through my settings real quick here. So for autofocus, I do not do binning. For when I'm doing manual rough focus, I'll bend that to 4x4 and I set it to full field. For the autofocus, I will change full field over to subframe and uh, I'll let it auto select a star. We'll see how it does. My, um, I'm using a, a gradient detection, which is kind of the algorithm that it uses, uh, or the poly polynomial algorithm, and I'm measuring the uh, HFR value and uh, with what a 1% tolerance. Let's see, um, my uh, step value is 40 for my focuser. And uh, let's see, I have my backlash set at 225. I've been messing around with this value, uh, plus or minus that, to try and get my focus curve to uh, not be flat when it starts. I, I'm not quite there yet. I, I know that there's more to do here with configuring but uh, it's been working pretty good. And let's see, anything else of note here? I think as far as that, you know, just configuring the, um, uh, setting the, the uh, critical focus zone here, uh, using what they call the classic algorithm uh, here in the, the focus module. And let's see, I have a 0.35 set up for tolerance. They, they actually recommend 0.5, but I, I have it a little bit tighter. I've been trying to get um, uh, you know, better, tighter focus results. And again, it's, it's going okay. Um, I have my uh, focal ratio set up here. The step size is 0.77 microns, and, uh, which is really good. So the, the focuser uh, has a sub-micron step size, which is, this is Astro Oasis, Oasis Focuser, and uh, it is just, it's very, very accurate um, as far as uh, its focusing precision. Um, over here, I just have like my aperture set up, and then the, these are the calculated uh, critical focus zones. So 40 steps is what I have for my scope. I think that I've read that um, most focusers are somewhere between 25 and 50 steps in the critical focus zone, but uh, um, it's good to go through the actual calculation process to figure out where you're at. Uh, mine actually came in at uh, like um, at 46 steps, um, and it, I've refined this down to 40 now so far. So anyway, let's try an autofocus and see how it goes. So it's just capturing an image right now, and then it subframed it. Remember, I have the subframe, so it's looking at the captured star in a subframe. This way, it doesn't have to load all of the stars in the image, and because um, uh, if you do load the entire field, uh, then it will uh, take all the processing to calculate and average all the stars in the field, which may be a little bit more accurate, but it takes a lot longer. You see this over here where it's just flat. So you know, I think that's backlash, but it seems to correct itself afterward. And we'll see what kind of curve we get here. So 
So it completed, and we got a focus precision down to 0.87 HFR. That's really, really good. So uh, that's a, a good focus. I think at this point, I will do a check on the alignment and see how the polar alignment is. So we'll get started with that in just one moment. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the uh, polar alignment here. This is a, uh, um, a three-step alignment and my exposure time. I use five seconds with 200 gain here because I have a filter in and uh, this works pretty good with the filter. So on the polar alignment, it's pretty much automatic. I'll go ahead and start it. And you should be able to see the telescope slewing here as we go through and do the captures of three different stars. Looks like it's hung up. I'm going to start that over. Let's go back to park. And we'll clear the mount model. And then we will start on the polar alignment here again. Seems like it's always something. I don't think we actually rotated. Is our time correct? No, the time is not correct. Let's see why. We'll stop that and park the mound again. And to now. All right, I don't think the mount knew where it was. Okay, one more time. This is the one. No? Well, let's see. We'll keep working on it here. All right, let's park again. Clear the model. Unpark. Clear the parking. Park again. <laughs> let's, uh, I'll unselect the meridian flip. Sometimes that can mess with things. I'm not sure why. And I know the binning. Two by two is what it works best on. Right, let's try again. If this doesn't work, I'm going to restart. All right, let's restart. And that process is pretty quick here. So we'll get that shut down and then let me get over to here and issue a restart. Now we just have to wait a minute. Interesting. All right. I think that's going to need another restart because PhD 2. 
was complaining. So I think we had something going on over here with StellarMate and uh, maybe PhD2 was having a problem. All right, there, we finally connected again. Let me make sure this looks good over here. Okay, PhD2 is up. Let's go back to um, Ecos here and reconnect. And let's try running polar alignment again. And I'm going to set the, uh, let's park the mount. I'll just set this back. Polar alignment start. Okay, it's working now. So it's about forty. Six seconds uh, out. It's not bad, but I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. So I'm going to head outside and get that adjusted, and then I will be back. All right, so I'm out here at the scope, and uh, the first thing I need to do is, is choose a star that I want to align to. And so I'm going to choose this one right here. And then I click refresh, and this will start cycling captures and update the error. And I'm going to make adjustments on the scope now, and we'll see if we can get this tighter. I just updated the alt and I need to go up a little bit. So 22 seconds, a little bit more. All right. Seven seconds, that's pretty good. Um, and then let's do a uh, uh, an azimuth adjustment here. We're at 43 right now. Thirty-six. Go the other direction. Small moves. And Seven and fourteen. That is good enough. Okay, we are polar aligned. And we'll head back inside. All right, so as I mentioned, we're shooting the uh, the Dumbbell Nebula, which is uh, Messier 27. And uh, it's about uh, 1,360 light years uh, from Earth. And uh, this nebula was the, um, the first such nebula to be discovered. It's a planetary nebula. And uh, Messier discovered it in 1764. Um, it's fairly bright at 7.5 magnitude. And it's about uh, eight arc minutes wide. And uh, you can view it pretty easily uh, with binoculars even. So anyway, we're just about ready to get started in just a few minutes here. 
and uh, we'll go back inside and make sure this kicks off without any problems. Okay, now with polar alignment and uh, a decent focus done, we are ready. So I need to go ahead and get my sequence back together. And this is why I saved these, because it makes it easy to get them back if I have to restart or something like that. This is still up and scheduled. 2039. Okay, good. So we are ready to go. So in about, uh, I don't know, um, 10 minutes here or so, or actually 15 minutes, then this will be ready to go. So I will be back then, make sure that everything kicks off okay. All right, we're just about a minute or so from this job kicking off. So the first thing it's going to do is slew over to the target. And then it'll do another, go run through another autofocus procedure um, on the target. And then it's going to do plate solving and alignment. And once that gets done, it's going to head over to PhD2 and get the guiding calibration done. And then after that, it should begin taking captures. So let's make sure our captures are set up. Our cooler is on. We're in the correct folder. Our system time is correct. I think this has like a default, like one minute delay or something like that. I'm going to need to change that because I just want it to start. <laughs> I don't know that there's any reason for it. To, I think it probably does that if you have multiple jobs and it gives a delay in between each one. Um, maybe that's for allowing the uh, mount to settle if it slews or something like that. All right, so the process is starting, and we are slewing over to M27. And so we're focusing now. I was having some troubles with this last night. There's a, a double star that's in this uh, star field that the uh, focuser was auto-selecting. And then it was causing problems with the... Uh, HFR calculations because it was trying to calculate both stars um, as one. All right, that went good. Weird curve, you know. Um, I'm still working on that. And now we should be plate solving. And this white bracket here is the solver. Okay, and it's lined up, and we're not quite there yet. All right, that's good. So we are lined up, and now this should be starting the guiding process. So let's head over to there. We can watch PhD2. Um, so it's auto selected a star and it's going to start its um, its calibration
Okay, it looks like it's locked on now and we've begun guiding. And cross your fingers that guiding goes good this evening. Watch this for a minute and see where it settles in. The, uh, the first capture should have already started, so we'll head over there in just a minute and check it out. Yeah. All right, let's head back over. So we can watch this from here. So we're at 1.46 on uh, the HFR for focus, which is pretty good. And uh, I've definitely been lower than that, and but that's not bad. And uh, guiding RMS is high right now because the initial calibration comes in. That will uh, lower here. Let it run just a little bit. I have this set. So this capture. Um, I'll show you. I have limits set on captures, so if the uh, the guiding deviation is um, greater than two um, RMS, uh, it will cancel the current capture, and it won't uh, capture unless we're below uh, two RMS. And then I do a refocus every sixty minutes. I was doing a refocus like every five frames. Um, but to be honest with you, it was taking up a bunch of time, and it wasn't really proving to um, to be of any benefit. So I just decided to set it for um, for a refocus every 60 minutes, and that seems to be working out okay. Yeah, we're down to 0.8 now in our guiding, and... This has a neat um, battery getting low. Uh, analysis tab here, and it's just sort of a, a dashboard for a heads up, um, or I can see focusing, I can see guiding, um, I can see capture progress. It lets me know uh, um, I, I do dithers um, in between each frame, um, and PhD two handles that for me. It does a, a couple pixel dither um, at the end of each frame. And we just got about a minute and a half here until our first image is up. If everything goes good. All right, first image is in. Let's see what we got. All right. All right, we are off to a good start. So a little bit of a hiccup with uh, like PhD2 or something in the very beginning there that was causing problems with communicating to the mount, but uh, got that resolved and we got started on time. So um, at this point, uh, you know, it's just a matter of uh, hoping that everything runs out. Uh, we do uh, expect some clouds in this evening uh, or the, uh, later uh, tomorrow morning, like, I don't know, uh, uh, like 2 a.m. or somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'm hoping that I can get uh, as many uh, decent captures in before that time and uh, have enough to finish off this project. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, if you made it this far, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this video, uh, just kind of going through um, my, uh, my process with my software. And um, anyway, if everything goes good, then the next thing that you're going to see is my final image of M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. So thank you very much. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF.